I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, I can assure you that uh, even though we are all adjusting to this world of webinars and telework, that in the Department of Defense, uh, the Secretary of Defense has not let up one bit on implementing our national defense strategy. And for me, this seminar is actually an opportunity for us to harvest ideas that were, will better help us implement our national defense strategy, because this region is really central to that strategy. Um, our cooperation in the Caspian region supports several key national defense strategy objectives. Strengthening partnerships for the long-term advancement of US interests, defending the homeland from terrorist attack, and preventing the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Now, I have to admit, my portfolio only includes two of the countries on the Caspian, Azerbaijan and Russia. Um, and obviously the nature of the relationship uh, between the US and both of these countries is extremely different. Um, so today I plan on just focusing my very brief remarks on our security relationship with Baku. Um, but it's true that there are many similarities in terms of the U.S. approach to Azerbaijan uh, and our approach uh, to many of the other countries that are in Russia's shadow, to include those of the South Caucasus, the Western Balkans, and Ukraine. But Azerbaijan specifically, um, we have to say, plays a strategically important role globally as a source and transit link for Caspian energy resources and it remains an important strategic partner for the United States. Since 2001, Azerbaijan has provided key ground and air access to Afghanistan, enabling critical logistical support for vital coalition operations. We absolutely recognize the dangerous neighborhood that Azerbaijan is in and the potential cross-border threats <clears throat> Azerbaijan faces, wedged between Iran to the south and Russia to the north, while at the crossroads of Europe, the Middle East, and Central Asia. There's no shortage of risks to legitimate transit through Azerbaijan and a persistent threat of terrorists, weapons of mass destruction, and illegal narcotics that could seek to enter or travel through this transit corridor. We actually started working with Azerbaijan on maritime security many years ago, prior to the current national defense strategy, through the DOD Cooperative Threat WMD Proliferation Prevention Program. And I believe that the region as a whole has benefited from the increased capabilities we've been able to provide through this program. Now today we're partnering with Azerbaijan on improving their capacity for both border security on the southern border and maritime security on the Caspian. For example, we're providing very practical assistance, things like X-ray screening systems to use at border crossings, and patrol boats and underwater surveillance equipment for maritime domain awareness and security operations. These programs increase Azerbaijan's capability to counter threats to its critical energy infrastructure, which provides a critical alternative to Russian and Iranian energy sources for Western markets. But I wanna emphasize these programs don't just benefit Azerbaijan. They are in the national interest of the United States and other partners in the region. But before I close, I wanna to touch on the, the issue that is most preoccupying all of us today, and that's the issue of health security. COVID has reinforced what we already knew, that biological threats and diseases don't recognize borders. With our globally integrated economy, health security risks in one country are risks to the region and to the world. The Department of Defense has been working for years with partners in the Caspian region to cooperatively bolster health security and strengthen preparedness and response capabilities against a threat of this kind. In addition to working to prevent the proliferation of biological weapons, the DOD Biological Threat Reduction Program facilitates the detection and reporting of highly dangerous pathogenic diseases that could affect the readiness and lethality of the US Armed Forces, regardless of whether such outbreaks are naturally occurring, accidental, or intentional. We've provided assistance with personal protective equipment during the COVID crisis, but even prior to this crisis, we were partnering with Azerbaijan and other regional partners on the development of a disease reporting system, as well as with laboratory infrastructure and expertise that's been leveraged in this crisis by the Azerbaijanis as part of their COVID preparedness and response efforts. 
We also recognize that while we must do all we can to respond to today's crisis, we must continue to focus on setting the foundation for improved security in the future. We have to think not just to today's crisis, but to the future crisis that we may all be confronted with. We must do that cooperatively and in partnership. So again, today, I'm really looking forward to hearing everyone's ideas that will allow us to build this vision of partnership in the region and security in the region. Thank you very much.